This is the Squeaky Bum Time Podcast, a CFCP production with Mike and Laurent. We just finished week two of the Premier League, and things are kind of shaking out a little bit, but we're getting a weird amount of goals. So this was the highest scoring week for a 10-game schedule ever in the Premier League. That's crazy. So I don't know what it means, but you can see the scores here. 5 2 4-3, 3-1, 2-1, 3-0, 5-2, 2-0, 4-2, 3-1. 4-2, yeah, there's so many one, goals. One nil is the outlier. No draws. So I think there's a couple of trends that I think about. One, one is there's no fans. That makes a difference to how teams play, right? They're not they're not feeling that pressure. They're not sinking deep. They're not pushing on. There's none of that sort of – it's just pure football. So that's one thing. And that affects referees more than anything. That's what home field advantage is. They learned in the NBA that referees and home crowd, the reason why home advantage lives is because the crowds get on the referees. So there's that. Uh, second is there's been a lot more penalties – and they're doing VAR a little bit better. I haven't been hateful towards it yet. It feels better. I like the offside flag staying down. They call it, then they do it. I like that they've gone to the monitors. I've seen two different occasions where they made a call, went to the monitor and changed it. Like uh, we'll, we'll talk about Chelsea. That was good. That's probably the first game we talk about. But that's a couple of things. So this is a trend to keep our eye on. Is scoring up? And then the last piece I would say is, if you look at the list of teams in the league, who are the defensive teams? Burnley? Wolves, maybe? But there's not really like, there's not like this shit heel, bottom of the league, sit back, just make up the numbers, sit behind the ball. Everyone's trying to go forward. Everyone's playing out for the back. And playing out from the back, by the way, is stupid if you're not awesome. You shouldn't play out from the back. Right. And so you look at, I mean, starting right there, right? The three teams that have come up, you've got Fulham, Leeds, and West Brom. None of them are shit heels. None of them are your, your, your father's West Brom, right? With Tony no, Pulis. No. That, fuck, what, this, fuck Tony Pulis. Yeah. But, the, but I mean, I think, you know, Slavin Bilic is a good coach. I think he, had, he got a raw deal at West Ham. He took West Ham to their highest finish ever in the Premier League, the Piat season. Then things yeah. went weird with Piat because everything went through Piat. And then Piat was like, oh, I signed a new contract. I actually don't want to be here. So, and I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. So fuck you. Um, and then, you know, Fulham is just awful. They set the record almost. They gave up 85 goals last time we're up. That was only a year or two ago. And they're worse. They're not better than they were that time. I mean, Tim Ream's still on the team. So there's that. And then we've seen Leeds now has played two, four, threes, one they won and one they lost. So we'll see how that goes. And look, Everton, the, the, I think the thing that's interesting, and as we sort of transition into this, the Premier League as a whole, as the richest league in the world, right now probably has, over the last 15 years, the seven best managers of all time. Klopp, sure. Pep, Mourinho, Ancelotti. Sir Alex. Uh, but I'm not even talking about that. But, like, oh, okay. guys that are around right now. Oh. Brendan Rodgers is a really good coach. He hasn't left. Uh, you know, but just there's really good managers who want to be in the league. So there's a high level. Hassan Hoodle's a really good high end manager. And we're uh, still not talking about Bielsa. We're not even talking about Bielsa. Bielsa is like Bielsa is already like the godfather of all of them. He's like up there with the Cruyffs of the world. Where right. yes, he's not a winning manager, but he's a like the way Ralph Ralph Ragnarok in, in Germany is Ragnarok. I don't know what the fuck his name is. But <laughs> That's a Thor he, movie. I, I, whatever. His, his name is literally Ra <laughs> his name is literally Ragnarok. I'm not even being funny. These guys that are influential and they sort of permeate into the game. But that level of management is in the Premier League. I think the other thing is like England itself is becoming more progressive in terms of football. Like the young guys that are coming up for England are good and leaving England, which says all of England as a whole is catching up to continental Europe because there's too much money in it. Anyway, that's my general. How much, how much do you think the Leicester winning season had an effect on smaller teams saying, you know what, fuck it, let's roll the dice and go for it? I think what it had an effect on was City, Liverpool being like, fuck this, 
this is never happening again. No, no, absolutely. But what I'm <laughs> saying is you're looking at teams like oh, Leeds, but, but, like Wolverhampton, like uh, – Belief? Uh, you know, Belief-wise? Yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, I think – Look it, at it, the top half of the table the last few years. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think there's a belief piece that goes into it. I mean, this is one of these things – before we even get into the games, I think one of the things that from an American perspective we look at and we think in terms of analytics for everything, but there's no doubt that soccer is a belief sport. Like there is an intangible piece that is beyond scope, right? You can play as a unit and by far outstrip the sum of your parts. Maybe not for winning a championship, maybe not for years and years on end, but like you can see teams that play as units and they lose, but because they don't have as good players, but you would be like, I would play for that guy, right? Like Burnley, I think, is a team you'd play for. You'd be like, yes, I'm going through the wall for this guy, right? <laughs> yes, Sean Dyche in the locker room puts you in a mode where you're going right, to kill something right, beautiful right after Right, kickoff. right. Sheffield United, you're like, yes, yes, I will go f- to the wall for that guy. On the flip side of that, also a good coach, but in a different way, is like I really think that, that, uh, that Graham Potter is one of those guys. Like the guys come off the field, that kid Tariq Lampy is incredible. He's like five foot five. But they're going, you can see it, right? And then you see it with Pep and you see it with Klopp. But like, there's a mentality piece to soccer that is beyond. And to your point, the Leicester thing gave all the teams that option of like, it's not, I'm not going to just sit here and lose. I fucking right. The and other, so they go for it. You know, right. you see like and Sheffield then, and, United as well as another one. Right. But I also think one other piece is there is an analytics piece to it. And it's, I, I know you're not a basketball person, but, but this is a real simple one. Uh, three is bigger than one and why anyone ever plays for a draw is fucking beyond me. Like a draw is bad. I'd rather lose. Go get the fucking win. Go for it. Right. Or if you're, yeah. yeah, And if you're tied, go get those wins because trust me, ask Liverpool what it's like to, to have a team that just wins. They lost the league because they drew too many times. Well, and I don't remember which episode we talked about this, but it does all, you know, boil back down to dollars and cents, right? 40 points over the course of 38 games is often looked at as the quote unquote safe zone. If you get to it 40 is. points, 40 good, points is which means you've what? always been safe, which means what you get another year of premier league revenue, right? Which is $150 so million. Kinda, dollars. Exactly. Least. So you're looking at saying, you know what? I could tie, I can draw 10 games or I could win three of them and <laughs> almost have the same exact yeah. outcome. Output, yeah right so almost think, the same exact yeah. so so yeah to your point yeah yeah so that so there's that but let's let's sort of get into it i mean i know we, there's all these conversations like there's all these things that we just sort of brought up and threw them in the air but but what i want to zero in on is like these are the things that you could talk about all endlessly with football and i think one of the things we can be different about is there's tons of podcasts that go through the games with reporters who are at the game whatever but you don't get like culture you don't get general trends you get this much more there is a tactical thing they are trying to get into analytics you have guys like michael cox you have the atlantic they do all these drawings of guys moving around but you know that stuff matters and you can tell when teams don't have it <laughs> like oh ooh, certainly like arsenal under wenger for the last six years where you're just like, <laughs> that was a fun time wasn't it <laughs> yeah and to to the uh, the flip side of it late pochettino something was wrong uh, he, he, I, I'll always love that man, but he sort of, you could tell in his heart, he quit right after the champ, actually probably during the Champions League final. And yeah, right they were, there penalty, was something, something happened in February there. Right. And I well, it was just, oh, I don't know. He didn't get any backing from the boss for <laughs> three years. And he said, yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And, he, um, and they've lost Delhi. I mean, we, we kid, we had our draft and I tried to grab him to fuck with you. I don't think he's going to play. I mean, we're going to see. He's got, we've got a thousand games, so he's going to play at some point. Did you see <laughs> quick sub, uh, subplot for Tottenham? It Tomorrow, you know, they're we supposed just, to play. Throw, throw, they're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're just going to send kids out there. Do you, no, do you know what happened? They canceled the game because uh, Leighton Orient, who's another great uh, Barry Hearn stories team, we've got, we can go into that one for one episode, but they, they, got they COVID. don't test. They don't – here's the thing. They don't test in League 2, right? So, so for the uninitiated, Premier League, League 1, League 2. So this is like the third division of English soccer. They don't test for COVID, right? Tottenham pays for their test and said, here you go, guys. Everybody swab your nostrils and your fucking mouth 
and they know that somebody's going to get COVID, they're going to have to cancel the game, and Tottenham doesn't have to play three games in six days. Stupid like a fox, that Daniel Levy, I tell you, Laura. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's exactly. By the happened. way, Barry Hearn does no longer own Leighton Orient. By the way, no, I know, I know, I know. They've had um, by the way, they've had rioting at their stadium, and like yelled at the, they've yelled at the uh, owners' box. It's fantastic. Oh, that's good. I'm a Leighton Orient fan now. Um, <laughs> but but transitioning back, right? Like, so we looked at the the we said we had the highest scoring week in Premier League history. Correct. One thing I want to bring up: four red cards. Right? Yes. And I think going back to VAR, you said penalties, which is absolutely spot on. Red cards as well is playing a part in this as well. Challenges that you you sort of look at it a hundred times and you go, if I'm looking at this in slow motion, I'm going to see something and I'm going to call it. But I think largely they're getting VIR better this year. You alluded to it. Yeah. It's they're, they're, they're letting the ref on the field Make decide the or not decide what he actually thinks well, he I saw. Mean, right? I, so so I, know of, I know two of these, right? West Brom was obvious. Kieran Gibbs fucking punched James Rodriguez in the face off the ball yes, for, did. for no reason. Fantastic. So that was obvious. And they just, that, that blew West Brom's game. Chelsea, incredible out to in run by Mane. Same run he made against City two years earlier. Uh, and, and Christensen, who's not a good defender, by the way. No. For, he basically tackles him. And you could argue that it's Kepa's fault because if he stays in his goal, then – Maybe Christensen doesn't have to do that. He, you force Mane to score a goal the real way, not the "Why are you here?" <laughs> <Kepa>. <laughs> right. uh, we can talk. We'll talk about Kepa when we start going to the games. Uh, the Brighton red. I don't know what happened. That feels like a two yellow thing, and Brighton was already up. The Basu- yeah, it was Basuma late. It was two. Fo- oh, oh okay. I, I remember Basuma kicked uh, a guy in the face. He wasn't Fantastic. looking, and he did like a like a scorpion kick with no oh, without looking at that's all unfortunate for everybody. And he just kicked the guy in the face, yeah, especially that guy. And, and you know, it wasn't, it was a red, but it was like an accidental, like, wh- okay. Pretty, okay. And then but like, why, but, but, but why did you do that? Like, what was the <laughs> yeah, that's well, I mean, he probably felt great. to. Kick I, I watched this face. game. Oh, I didn't see the Egan panel. It was too early. Yeah. It was very similar to the Christensen uh, call. It was oh, last took a guy down. It was, yeah, he took a guy down. So, by it the way, the and then, and then the amazingly, off. Sheffield got a penalty, and the recently transferred Emmy Martinez, the hero of the of 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 Arsenal's season, who just moved on after ten years on loan at Arsenal, goes to Aston Villa, saves a save. He's a fucking good goalkeeper. I'm like, he's a great goalie. Yeah, like what was Arsenal thinking? Like, why do they think Bert Leno is better? I don't get it. I think it might be a salary thing. They couldn't, you know, they, they can only swallow so many contracts. Well, I mean, I guess like it's, so. it's, yeah, ke- keepers are keepers. I get it. But just like he's big, he's strong, he can play with his feet, and he saves penalties. Like, yeah, he's, he's fantastic. I, I hated having to watch him on Arsenal last year. He was good. Um, he was really yeah, good. Yeah, he was. He was. So, so I'm so glad that's he's good not there for anymore. Them. Right. And then Villa got their goal on a, on a header at the end. Very championship level soccer goal. Yep. Uh, but let's let's first go into Chelsea Liverpool. Liver that was probably the game of the week. First half, I feel like, you know, from the lineup perspective, Chelsea had their regular crew: Havertz, Mount, Werner. Werner was good, but Liverpool were really the dominant force. You saw a level of of Liverpool that's less like, oh fuck, this is Liverpool. I, re- I remember oh. one chance Werner. Uh, I I think it was a great Jorginho pass down the left flank. Um, Werner was away if he goes in on his left, right? Yeah. Like you've seen so many other just, strikers do. He just he he didn't they, do it. They had two or three different moments where they weren't confident enough to shoot. Right, right. Werner, but that was one. Of them. T- Chelsea's playing too well. There's no way they's going to go to that. And uh, and it, when you, when you talk about Liverpool, you have to talk about uh, United, the historical rivals. Uh, I think they're now tied with championships all time at 17 or 18 like that. Uh, but United lost to Crystal Palace three one. There was a handball penalty in this one too, blah, blah, blah. Probably should not have been a penalty. It was a little bit close, like they just kicked it onto his hand. Then Martin Atkinson does go to the monitor and calls it, which was bullshit. So that should never have been a penalty. But anyway, Crystal Palace was better, and they should have won, and they did. They did, but and it's, there needs to be some one more call, which I just – it's a new trend in the league this year, and I fucking hate it. What? Right after that penalty, David De Gea – stops the penalty and they look at he oh, stops that's right. he that's jumps right. off that's of his right. line 
literally inches. So the rule is you have to have one foot on or, or behind the line as the player kicks the ball. So yeah, now we're literally looking at inches of when he touched the ball, where your foot is. It's like offsides in hockey. It, it makes my head like just absolutely. It's, just, it, it's dumb. It's dumb. It's dumb. It's dumb. You've already got like, think about the goalie's perspective, the disadvantage you're at. You're yeah. basically guessing 50, 50. And even then you have to make a save on a really, really hard traveling ball from 12 yards away. The thing is, so, it's, it, the I thing that I, I went through with all my VAR stuff is just like, who is this for? Who wants this? It's the idea of accuracy. It's not even accuracy. It's the idea of it, the facade of accuracy. Yeah. It, they're getting, no, it's the facade of precision. <laughs> well, oh, you're right, right. Right, right? Yeah. You want accuracy as we hit the building. Precision is we put the bomb through the window, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> or we hit the block, right? <laughs> right. All we want is you to hit the building. We don't need, like, they're arguing about everything anyway. It's not like it stopped the arguments, right? It's the same. No, it just moved. It I just mean, made that, it worse. Yeah. So, but, so if you look at that moment in that game, United's only down one nothing. De Gea makes a huge save. They go, yeah. here's one other thing that I don't like that they do. They played for two minutes, stopped the game, brought it back, and we're like, no, no, no. He's got to retake the fucking penalty. He's like, what? And, of course, he, they actually use a different penalty taker. He buries it. And now it's 2 nothing, and United's like, well, now what the fuck? So this is another one where, like, if there were fans in the stands, that would have been ugly. an abomination. Yeah. They would have been booed. United would have been booed. Plus, the way they were playing was so – United has this thing that every once in a while, they just become crap system. Like, how, I, I know you don't want this to happen. Nobody does. How Pochettino is not the manager at Manchester United boggles my mind. Well, I think that they're just giving Ollie enough rope to hang himself, and he just hasn't trashed a new noose yet, or a garage door opener, excuse me. But, but uh, for what? Like, who are they kidding? I, I don't know that the Wood, the the Ed Woodward knows Anything. what he wants to do. Yeah, right? He's I, just, it, it's like yeah, it's kind of like it would be like. I guess it's kind of like Steinbrenner, like pre-stick Michaels Steinbrenner Yankees. Right, so like late eighties. Yeah, late eighties, early nineties, pre Buck Showalter Yankees, right? Yeah. It's just throwing that money period people. from like eighty two to ninety three when the Yankees are just like fucking around. They're firing managers, show or they're like the they're they're, but but they're the best team in spending the most money. I wouldn't wouldn't I, I wanted I almost wanted to say Daniel Snyder Redskins, but because the salary cap in the NFL they were all basically it the same, right? But in you know baseball, what we were talking about this the other day. It's the it's the 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 pre lockout Rangers, right? After Gretzky and Messier left, and they're like, right. "Fuck it, we'll just buy everybody over the age of thirty five and spend so much of James Dolan's money that it yeah. almost is on par with how much he's spending on the Knicks." Right. And we'll never make the playoffs. Literally, ten years will not make the playoffs. So right. that's so, kind of where they are. But that's where United are. But but to put this into perspective, Manchester United, <laughs> it's like. Real, Barca, United. Like, they're right – that and it's Barca, one of the richest teams. Yeah. It's more like Real, United. Sure. In terms of, like, old money. The mm-hmm. money that you need. They're going on seven years. They'll probably not win the league. They could be in the wilderness. Easy. And the weird thing is, as well, like we said, they've got the money. They, they have the resources. It's not a problem. Yet – uh, the guy they got a, the, a bad GM. They they they're, they're horrible GM. So much so that, that they're getting out outclassed and outbid for players by Tottenham Hotspur, the cheapest team in the history of the league. Yeah, but they right? well, like, they're well run. You may not like it, but it's well run. I mean, it depends on the day. But they got it, a stadium just, that's better. Like old, they United would kill to have that stadium. Yeah, it's pretty great. Right? Um, yeah, no, I, I get that, but right. so, I just don't understand but you, how but they United, can be this classic, insipid, classic, insipid result. They'll probably play someone tough and play really well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's when they play someone like Crystal Palace where they should beat them that they lose. But at home, it's just like, what are you doing? Dude? But you you hit the nail on the head. They they come out to Old Trafford. It's crickets, and they're like, well, that sucks. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, if if Old Trafford is buzzing for that, which is their first home game of the year, I I yeah. think, right? Yeah, uh, they win that game too, nothing. But not if they go down behind and have that crazy handball. 
Uh, but let's right. uh, so so we, we talked we talked these two games and then we'll, we'll sort of pick up around. Do you want to talk your 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 Spurs game and then we'll talk today's Wolves game? Tell me. Yeah, about I mean, it reminded me a lot of Chelsea in the first week, uh, match week. They were absolutely horrible in one going away, and and it today or for for this specific game, it came down to Harry Kane. Um, we talked a lot in the last few episodes about how. Tottenham's best passer is Harry Kane, right? Forget Bale, forget everybody else. Harry Kane gave Hyunming Sun four absolute peaches. I mean, inch perfect passes. He wasn't even looking for two of them. We're, we're he talking said it. He said he wasn't years. looking. Yeah. So the, the absolute balls on this guy to do what he did in the role that he didn't even ask to be in and then put it, like I said, on Sun's laces four times. He's now, not going to miss from there. He to be fair, one other time. Sun is a really good finisher. Like He's a whenever, finisher. whenever City play against Spurs and Sun is on the break, I'm scared. Sure, but think of it like this for a second: a guy scored four fucking goals, and he should not have been. He was not the best player on the field. What in the and not what only that world? They should have lost. They should have been down. Bad. We did, yeah, while well, they were down, they were down one nothing. They were absolutely lifeless again in the first half, and right before halftime. Tangy and Domblay makes an absolute Musa Dembelian uh, spin, twirl, and pass out to Kane, who one touches it like he's a wizard into Sun, one one at half. Yeah. Right? Okay. That saves all, him, is, right. all is forgiven. And then the second half, it was the Harry Kane show. It was absolutely unbelievable. He scored the fifth one too. So he had four assists and a goal. He was he was everywhere, and he didn't even really have to go anywhere, which was the weird thing. He was never really in the box until very late on when he, he got that that tap in for the fifth. So now what, what changed? When I like, look at, yeah. is it, is it a midfield thing? Is it like, how did, because is it, is it, is it, is it Southampton just playing a high line and just be like, Oh, okay. Just let this guy who's super fast and scores goals just run a little bit. But, but Kane was <laughs> Kane kind of, you can tell sometimes he gets frustrated and goes to the ball, wherever it's going to be. Right, He'll right, play right. N- near the, near our 18 yard box just to get a touch of the ball. If he's really not, if he's really that hungry, he was doing that, right. He was going deeper. He was going wider. In fact, I think at least two of the goals I can, I can remember from just off the top of my head were from near the sideline. Right. So he's curling these, these, these pearls in. I mean, they were good. They were really good. They were great. So, so that's kind of the story is Kane had seen enough and he's like, uh, no, my turn. And he just wasn't having it now. Yeah. Now, Bale's not going to be in for at least another month, probably, because surprise, he's injured. But um, <laughs> the idea – I'm <laughs> It is. But the idea that he's going to be com- bombing down the right, Sun on the left, and Kane, as we've said on this show, you heard it here first, he's going to be in that false nine role, in that Firmino role, they sort of, play, I think. Just play him deeper. That's, that's what I think is going to happen, because everybody – who, who didn't – I can tell they didn't listen to the pod. I see the numbers. But if they had – their eyes had been opened on Sunday. Yeah. They went, holy yeah. shit, he's the best passer on the team, maybe in the league. Yeah. So he, he officially announced himself as that number 10, which is great yeah. because Ndombele's not it. He's, a, he's, a, he's an eight. He's a Le carrier. Celso, he carries the ball, doesn't really pass. Yeah. Exactly. Lo Celso has, has inklings of it, but he also – he's Argentinian. He's dirty. He likes to get back and defend and get stuck in and throw, yeah. his, throw his cleats at people, right? So yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't have all of the Ericsson – traits either yeah erickson right? just wouldn't do anything and just be like exactly right and it just, right what just happened that lo celso up. was a more complete player than erickson but but of course not as skilled or or, or high yeah. high-end at anything right so now you were looking at a team of two insanely attacking fullbacks god knows what in the back line you've got hoybier in front of them then dombe lo celso and then the front three of of uh sun kane and bale left to right the That's only problem is you don't have a good manager who's going to make it work I'm sorry. I know. Mourinho sucks. No, and believe me, I was cursing him all up and down, yeah. all the way through. How, how does this keep? The how do they goal. keep coming out flat? Like he's supposed to be a motivator, a man manager. What the fuck is right. going on? That's because he's playing thing. fourth century football. Uh, <laughs> speaking of not playing fourth century football, City three, Wolves one. Uh, my team was good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was very, very worried about this game, and in the first half, City were like. Holy shit, they're not afraid. They've got this. Uh, they played for once, for once, Pep played defensive. He played Rodri and Fernandinho together in front of 
Ake and Stones. That would be a new partnership, Ake and Stones, whatever, uh, because yeah. City have like three guys with COVID, guys that are injured. And somehow, the first half especially, uh, Mendy was able to defend Triore, which was amazing. Uh, you know, City got a goal on a, on a stupid penalty. Like, what are you doing? The guy, their defense, size takes down De Bruyne as he's going to the byline. Penalty nine times out of ten. De Bruyne Boy, was that away. stupid. It was stupid. <laughs> Holy shit. And it then, was very uh, unlike Wolves where they, they don't make mistakes like that very often. No, it wasn't, no. It wasn't an, a goal-scoring opportunity by any no, means. No. It was a corner kick about to happen. Yeah. And then Foden scored a goal 15 minutes after that which was a really nice, easy, very classic, classic city goal. Lots of passing, cut back. He's there, puts it away, no problem. Then the second half, for about 15 minutes there, 10 to 15 minutes, it got scary. Wolves came into the game. They got a couple of cutbacks. Uh, you know, uh, Jimenez missed a couple. Potence destroyed the soul of, uh, for their goal, destroyed the soul of uh, Kevin De Bruyne. Cuts on right from the corner on the 18 yard box. Nutmeg crosses, boom, to Jimenez. Of course, their finisher finishes it. But, you know, City managed to get back control of the game and sort of took care of it in the latter half of the game. So it was a good game. It was a tough game for City. You know, they felt really good in the first half. Uh, but the second half was they had to struggle. And you could see the problems like whenever, whenever uh, Wolves pushed the city back line, they were just leaving gaps, right? Like for the cutbacks, like they weren't cohesive or no one was leading them or no one was showing that fight. I think both Ake and Stones, they were good enough. They passed the ball well. They were moving things around. But if it weren't for uh, Rodri and Fernandez, I think they would have been exposed. Uh, Stones is not a great defender. There were a couple of moments, you know, your boy, Carl Walker, I thought had a really good game. He was all over the place. Mendy was okay. First half, second half, not so much. Uh, as a Triari got back into the game. And then, um, you know, it was just a good good game all around. Like, I was happy. I got scared. City put it away. I think they'll be really happy with the result. And, you know, De Bruyne was fucking incredible. He just always is incredible. He's he's the best player in the league, and there's not even a second. And in, and it's so fun. Well, I mean, I mean Ma- Mane and, and, and Salah are pretty fucking good. Yeah, they're, they're third and fourth is my point. You know, like, but they're but, not – but they can't affect the game, right? They don't come deep and move balls around. Where right, like, what right. What the fuck? <laughs> De, Bruyne, De Bruyne, he just commands so much. So you've got Manchester City, which arguably is the greatest collection of talent in Europe. Right. Yes. Europe. 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 Um, the other one. Uh, and and he just is a commander of men, which is very strange because he's not. If you look at him, he looks like Kevin from Home Alone. He's, he's not. A, he's a pink pig. That's right. That's right. He's. he's yeah. There's nothing even slightly commanding. Yeah. Or, he's he's got a Larry Bird quality to him. It doesn't look like an athlete. That's very much it. That's exactly right? he's what like, it is. He's, he's a weird not, fellow from Indiana. He's got weird – his legs are spindly. He's, he's fit, obviously, but you can, he's like a little bit of a roundness to his belly somehow, even though he's probably like 2% body fat. And you see him compared to other guys. You're like, this guy who's like sunburned and has red hair? <laughs> and is playing looks, his Game Boy at halftime? His like, mouth is open. You're like, what the fuck is going on? But he's hard. He yells at his teammates. He expects them to be on – the end of balls that he makes passes for. He's always going, what the fuck's wrong with you? You should be where you're supposed to be. Um, uh, I, I thought it was a really good team performance. And, and, and Wolves are good. I mean, you love them. They're tough as fuck. Like, getting a win on the road against Wolves is – that counts. <laughs> that's Absolutely. A, that's, I, I a, that's, a re- see... that's a real win, right? Like, that's that not a fucking is. around. Yeah. And that's the first game of the season, right? So, City, I didn't get to yes. see the second half. At, right, for City. I get to see the second half, and I, I got to say, like, when I saw that it was 2-1, I was going to put all the money on 2-2. Because what <laughs> happens when Wolves get a taste of blood, it descends into complete madness almost instantly. That's why I keep telling everybody you need to be a Wolverhampton Wanderers fan. It's a right. lot of fun. And, 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 and uh, this is another game. If the, if the fans were there, it might have been tricky. Very possible. Right? Because like then you get the oh shit real, that we don't were, get. They were really pushing. Like The fans yep. would have been really into it, and City would have really been in trouble. Uh, so, but they did get a goal in the last minute that that I thought should should point out is like that that Gabriel Jesus got and he really was pushing for it. And one of the things to watch out for is he last year 
led the league in expected goals in only 180 minutes. So that means that he should have scored the most goals in the league in the least in only a part-time player's time. If he can get to that number, he's going to score 25 goals. Now, yep. at the same time, he also didn't score those goals. So, <laughs> right? so that's another side of it where he gets a lot of chances and doesn't take them. But if he can get to like a 20% conversion rate, he's going to score 25 goals, 30 goals, easy. Especially yeah, that's a, that's a because great – I don't know that I would say a dark horse for the Golden Boot, but certainly a good contender if, for it. If, if they're not going to make a signing and there's no Aguero, I mean, that's the thing, yeah, about, no, that's it. That's the thing about Aguero. He just, he just takes goals that you're just like, what? How did he do that? The spin, the spin to the 100,000-mile-an-hour shot over the goalkeeper's head in the top corner, I think it's just fucking <laughs> – I don't know who can do that. Nobody, he, just him. So you had to go a full week – you, you had to watch all the other kids on the playground. Yes. And you didn't get to go in. And the first game you had scared the fucking shit out of you. Yes, So talk correct. to me about how that felt to finally and – and then you had to wait for Monday, right? So you had to watch all the kids on the playground this weekend, and you had to go Monday in the middle of the afternoon and say, finally, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. So, so one, uh, one of the things that's interesting about my fandom for Manchester City is I should be a City fan – because I'm pessimistic and think that they're fucked all the time, even though they're the greatest team of the last 10 years. Right? <laughs> so I have natural typical city, like typical city is a, if there's a way to lose city, will do it. And they have had that in weird ways sometimes. So this game was one of those games. I was like, there's just no way they lost twice to this team last seat last year in really bad fashion. They were up to Ederson got sent off. Then they lost because of Dama Traore put the fucking turbo button on and just took off and decided to learn how to shoot to the corners <laughs> because in this game, he just couldn't keep the ball. He looked like a muscle bound guy who, if you got close to him and didn't let him kick the ball past you, you could just take it off him because they did it like 10 times. They're like, Oops, give me that. So they were just pressing him because he's not that good. And what was amazing, another good pr- part about stopping Traore is Raheem Sterling went toe to toe with him a couple times. Oh, did he? He held him back. Like, Raheem wow. Sterling is strong. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, that was amazing. Like, they were in the corner, and he's, like, got his back to him, and they're just fighting. Um, but, you know, how it felt, uh, you know, I wasn't too worried. I mean, I, I kind of just want Liverpool to lose. Like, I live for schadenfreude. I just want C- uh, United to lose. I just want Liverpool to lose. Um, I get excited for the teams that I don't consider threats. Like, I like – you're my friend. I like to see Spurs doing okay. Uh, Arsenal, I have a, I have a Mikel Arteta thing for me. I never, I'm always kind of rooting for Arsenal a little bit, except when they had Wenger because I like to watch them lose. Uh, you know, I, I have, I pick my spots. I, you know, I, I really enjoy Brighton because I really think that Potter is a good coach. Uh, and then when Chelsea were playing, I was like, I hate Chelsea normally, but I really wanted them to beat Liverpool. Well, it's the enemy of your enemy is your friend, yeah? But, th- but I think that's like what I do most of the time. And then for my team, I just, th- just don't lose, for the love of God. <laughs> Even though they win most of the time, it's more relief than joy. Uh, See, it's funny because I have that. And let's be clear about something. Manchester City's worst season in the last 10 years is better than last Tottenham's. last year. <laughs> yeah, and it's better than Tottenham's best in the last 10 years, okay? So let's pres- yes, put that yes. back into perspective. Yeah, but so I- nine losses. Yeah, okay. Nine. We, had, we probably had 46. Uh, <laughs> so when you think about where I feel as a Tottenham fan, I get that organically because it – I mean, I'm always waiting for the floor to fall out and, you know, from under me. And uh, inevitably it always does. How is Manchester it that City Tottenham had two, less, two, less, two more losses than City? Two more losses. But Last year? Like, yeah. But you had 11 draws and we had only three. <laughs> oh, that's strange. Yeah, because you guys beat the piss out of teams 6 nothing sometimes. And we go, right, hey, right. Uh, we're up 2 nothing, but yeah. we're going to lose How did we lose? How did City lose nine games and score 102 goals? How the fuck does that happen? No, uh, I'll tell you how. You take the over on Manchester City every time last year because, I mean, anytime they played Otamendi, I was like, well, uh, I'm either going into a lot of debt or I'm going to be in a great spot in 45 minutes. A 67 goal differential. Just like, what the fuck? How yeah. did that happen? It's like magic. Like, you couldn't, you could replay it last season 10 times over and they wouldn't lose that many games. Anyway, I'm talking about last season. 
So, so you can see why I was afraid of wolves. <laughs> sure. No, absolutely. And, and what's interesting, and I didn't realize this until I looked at it just now, is that you, you're running a little bit of a gauntlet. Your first home game next Sunday versus Leicester, who uh, they fumbled a, a top four spot last not, year. Not afraid of Leicester. Fine, but nonetheless, it's not it's not, not afraid, not afraid of Leicester. You know why? Because at- I'll tell you why. That's a team we can play. Because yeah, if, 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 it, becomes a, play if well. it becomes a game where we play, we can beat them. Right? It's it's Wolves that I worry about. It's Crystal Palace that I worry about. It's 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 Sheffield. Actually, Sheffield United and Burnley, not so much. It's the ones that really have specifically black players with pace. <laughs> it's always a black yeah. guy scoring a goal. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. I just You're a racist. No, but I mean, I, it, the teams that are too English, Pep's got their number, right? It's no, that, that, that are athletic is what I'm saying. Like guys that can really run, really hit on the break fast, right? Like Sheffield's yeah. slow. They're not going to score. Uh, or Liverpool, fucking, they, when they play on the break, you're just dead. Um, so you've got you you're opening the season and i'm really just kind of looking at this now again though and and you're right to an extent you will handle lester relatively well nonetheless it's not because a game brendan you... rogers is is a is a he, he's a bobbler yeah no he is he is but so you <laughs> but listen you've got wolves you've got lester then leeds so that's going to be another fun one oh. and then you've got arsenal so you start up with four brand names right to start the season. What we were talking about, I think, on the, the season Yeah, we need to win those games. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough. was that you need, to, you need to not let Liverpool get out to an absurd lead by, you know, Halloween. No, no. I mean, to the I, point where they don't look back. I, let's be frank. Like, that's six – would you say four games or three? Four. That's 12 points. If yeah. we came away with 10, that would be okay. Maybe sure, – absolutely. I don't want any losses. No more fucking losses. Fuck it. Get those draws, baby. No, I just said I don't want draws. I don't want draws. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not so worried about leads, and I'll tell you why. If they're going to man mark, we kill teams that we man mark. We just start moving around. They just don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> <laughs> the way but, that they seem to be pressing, though, I'm, I'm very intrigued to watch that game. City, City. C- come press, please. Come no, on. I know. I Believe me, I know what happens. I've seen that movie <laughs> before. But... Please, please come press us. I right? want to especially, believe, especially with the, the defenders that they have. Like they just don't have the quality, right? They're not. Yeah. There, right. But I want to believe that Leeds is going to win the league this year, so I'm going to follow them. <laughs> that would be amazing. That, that would, would be, be wild. fucking incredible. <laughs> They're not going to like you. No one is winning the league with Patrick Bamford as their fucking. <laughs> and Jack dude, Harrison, dude. No, Jack Harrison, fine. Bamford's not good. He's <laughs> slow, and he's like a. He's like, he's a shit version of Eden Jekko. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and Eden, actually, Ed and Jekyll is really fucking good, but Ed and Jekyll is 35 years old. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, he's the, Ed and Jek- he's the Ed and Jekyll of the championship. Tall, lanky. You think he can head the ball, but he can't. Right. And he tries, and you need to put the ball at his feet, which is how Jekyll is. He plays smaller than he is. I mean, Jekyll, I love him. He's, he's, a, he's a city legend. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, we're, yes. We're, we're we're getting on we're getting on the end here. We're getting on an hour. An hour. Oh my was, god! We said we'd fun. go this shorter this one. But yeah, we'll talk on Thursday about some of the better games coming up this week. Um, I don't see a lot. City Leicester, like I said, is one of them. Liverpool Arsenal. There it is. There's the game of the week again on a Monday. Don't love that, but uh, not a ton to get excited about this week. So we'll no, go come on, through. Sheffield United versus Leeds. That's fucking Lancashire. That's old school. There's United oh, involved. Okay. Uh, Tottenham uh, Newcastle. That's no, a good I'm not one. excited. No, I'm I not excited. Be, I would be scared. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not excited. Uh, Brighton, my boys. Brighton against Man United. Can can United bounce back against a team that tries to play them off the park? Will United sort of try and play back and hit on a break? Because if they go, if if Brighton had anything resembling anything that resembled finishing, they'd be fucked. And keep an eye on young Mister Lamptey, the fullback, Tariq Lamptey. He is incredible. He's good. He's good. But incredible. let's let's shut up because then we're not gonna fucking have anything to talk about on Thursday. Yeah, but I'm just telling you, we got good stuff. We do. All right, fine. So you should listen to Thursday. If you get <laughs> listen, if you made it this far into this show, you're coming back on Thursday. Nobody has made it this far into the show. I don't. <laughs> we won't even. No, we're not gonna. That was the squeaky bum 
Time Podcast with Mike Salerno and Laurent Cortines. This was a crap football, crap pundit production. We will return on Mondays and Thursdays for the Premier League season. We will talk about soccer and other things that interest us. Mike is crazy. Laurent is insane. That's why it works.